Welcome to this edition of Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and today I have the pleasure of being here with Bridget Artis, who is a designer and author and the owner of the bookstore, Born Again Vintage. Thank you so much for being here, Bridget. Thank you. <laughs> so I mentioned that you, you have several hats, author, designer, um, entrepreneur. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, I actually graduated from FIT. Um, I went to University of Maryland first. Okay. Um, was a bit lost there, and then transferred uh, to FIT after two years at University of Maryland, and um, stayed there. And I studied buying and merchandising. Okay. And for those of, for those who do not know what FIT is, what is FIT? It's Fashion Institute of Technology. And that's here in New York? That's in New York. Okay. So you have a book, you have a, a store that is also named the same thing as your book. How did you, so the, which came first, the book or the? The book uh, came first. Okay. Uh, actually the line came first, the Morning okay. and Vintage clothing line came first. Then the book, and then the store, which is actually Born Again Vintage, the collective. Because okay. I'm not the only one in my store. Oh, okay. I have several indie designers in there. Okay, so mm -hmm. can you tell us about Born Again? And you said it was, what is the name of the collection? It's Born Again Vintage. It, it is Born Again mm -hmm. Vintage. Yeah. Okay, so explain. Uh, so that, that is how you started. That was right. way before the book. So right. can you tell us a little bit about Born Again Vintage, the collection? Uh, Born Again Vintage, co the collection, is a sustainable clothing line, and okay. um, it's always been that way. It's something I've done. Um, it actually started as t-shirts, and what I did was I cut up vintage t-shirts, and I uh, would use different letters to create these, you know, very clever sayings, and I would put them on blanks. And so I was always drawn to the vintage, though it was in t-shirts, it was still vintage t-shirts. And then I just kind of got antsy with the t-shirts. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was a lot of work cutting all the letters and uh -huh. sewing individual letters to make, you know, whole sayings. So um, I, you know, went into the clothing realm and I was always drawn to vintage. I just had this passion for it. And so, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially vintage enthusiasts, you know, aren't, you know, um, patting me on my back and congratulating me for cutting up vintage, but, um, <laughs> But you know, I I like the prints, I like the textures, like the patterns, and so I would cut and I would make it into something that was more wearable today. Okay. And so that started the line, and um, because the line was eco-friendly and green and sustainable, it kind of created this buzz or this, you know. Um, and one of the Random House editors kind of stumbled across my line on Bleecker Street in New York, and mm. loved the tagline "Born Again Vintage," loved what I was doing, and. And then, hence the book. Wow, that's yeah. that's a great story. Yeah, I'm surprised. I have to say, I'm surprised that uh, vintage people would not like the fact that you are. Well, recycling. I didn't even know until actually the book came out. I thought it was a great idea. Yeah, I, was, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> but the vintage enthusiasts, you know, their whole point is restoring and, and keeping vintage preserved. So to find out someone's actually cutting it up was a bit of a, you know, <laughs> I was like the, you know, the black sheep of the vintage family. But um, so actually, I, because of that, not solely because of that, but I usually use things that are stained okay. or just really can't be worn. You okay. know, it's just been that, you know, um, not, a, you know, not defective or anything, but, you know, a whole um, head to toe piece of um, lame dress. It, no, no one's going to wear, wear that. Right. <laughs> no one's going to wear are it. over. <laughs> and I'm actually giving it more life. You know, I'm okay. allowing it to be something that's classic and one of a kind, and it's not going to get thrown out. Exactly. Right. So you're not 
putting more things in a landfill. Right. And the, and I've I've seen your clothes. They're very cool. Oh, thank They're you. very very cool. Thank you. So after you uh, did the Born Again Vintage Collection, mm -hmm. then came the book. Right. You said that they okay. And how did that come about? And what is in the book? Um, well, like I said, I, I was a part of a collective in, okay. um, on Bleecker and Soho um, called Edge, and uh, editor, you know, saw the pieces and saw the. Um, she loved the tagline "Born Again Vintage," and um, and she called me. We did a phone tag thing for several months, and then finally we caught up to one another, and she pitched the idea, and um, you know, I just really just stayed silent because I was just like kind of, you know, it's like, wow, why would I do this book? But okay, you know. <laughs> so once I got home and, you know, it sunk in, I was just like, wow, I was overwhelmed actually. And from that meeting, it probably took maybe 14 months after that meeting for, and the book came out. Wow. So literally, it was really quick. Um, it's 25, um, 25 different ideas to do with your clothes and it's broken down into seasons. Okay. So um, it's fall, winter, summer, and spring, and then there's a section for like um, made of honor dresses or prom dresses. Okay. So it's just giving, it's really an inspirational book just to kind of think outside the box as opposed to just throwing something away. Now you can, oh, well, that sweater, I won't throw it away because I could turn it into a corset. Oh, you know, okay. like, you know, so it just gives you ideas, but you do have the instructions. And, um, like, when it first came out, it actually became a really big thing because um, a big ch there's a thrift shop guide in the back. And oh, really? so from that's A to wonderful. Z in all the different states. So, like, a lot of people were just, like, buying it for that because that's, like, a big, you know, must-have to, like, have all the different thrift shops in the different states. That is what I was going to ask you next because when I think of vintage clothing, uh, clothing I don't usually, I don't have anything really vintage, so mm -hmm. the 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 appendix that you talk about in the back where you would find these vintage clothes, are they are they stores that you would find in every city or are they specific to a city like in San Francisco you, you go to this store or is it yeah, like you go to all the goodwill city oh, okay yeah okay um, because uh, I would say a good chunk of it is vintage shops oh as opposed to thrift you know okay. I mean it's like a nice mix of both okay so um, the specific um, states have the listed the vintage and then they'll throw a couple of thrifts in there as well. Okay, so... And it's also not necessarily, it could be just, you know, that sweater you had two seasons. That, you know, you just, it's just out of season, you don't know what to do with it, but you don't want to throw it away. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be vintage. Okay. You know. And so does your book show us how to even select vintage clothing if we don't already have it? Or how, what, how, how would I find out? Like, how would I even know what to look for if I went to... <laughs> A vintage shop. I mean, do I go and get yeah, that Chanel? Yeah, actually, doesn't suit? tell you that. Like, you have to. So I just <laughs> have to sort of have. <laughs> you have to do that. Um, but I think it's more of a natural pull, like what you're gravitated to towards. You know, okay. um, and that's why when you're a novice at it, it's easier to go to a vintage shop because at a thrift shop, it would be way too overwhelming for someone. Oh because you wouldn't really know what's vintage, what's not vintage, and okay. you know, your head would be spinning, and there's so much, <laughs> you know, there's so much in there. It's like, you know, you have to dig, you know, I actually enjoy that, you know, okay. like the, the going through piece by piece and then finding like this gym amongst all of this, you know, other stuff. But, you know, for newbies, I always say to um, go to a vintage shop and kind of get familiar with what vintage looks like. Okay, Yeah. all right. So in your book, is it, you said it's um, based on four seasons. It's also, it sounds like you also have um, prom mm -hmm. type dresses and wedding dresses and things right. like that, that the, the more formal attire. Right. Is it geared mostly toward women? Yeah. Okay, Yeah. all right, and it's, and adults, I mean, you don't have like any baby vintage. No, no, no baby vintage. <laughs> It exists, but there's no, no baby vintage in the book. Okay, the, the question I always ask when I'm doing this, um, when there's a book that I should be able to follow along, mm -hmm. how easy is it? Do I have to know how to sew very well? Do I have to know how to sew? Oh, I get level? that a lot, actually. Um, and the book is is the the different items or the different um, the different things you can do from the book is broken down actually by easy intermediate. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you know, every season has an easy, you know, it has a, um, a intermediate and it ha you know, so it breaks it down because you know, you can't really expect someone to pick it up 
and not, you know, ever had sewn before to all right. of a sudden, you know, know how to do this. So there's some things that just literally need um, a needle and thread, wow. some things that don't need any sewing whatsoever. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. Not much, but it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> but at least it has, you know, yeah. there's something there so that you can yeah. get started, especially if you're if you're entirely new to this. Right. So, um, so we talked about the book, uh, mm -hmm. Born Again Vintage, and now you said you also, you know, there's also the store that you right. have. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we go to that, where can people find your book? Well, um, actually, the book is sold out. <laughs> oh, okay. The book okay. is sold out. You could only um, get it from me directly. So okay. that would either be going, you could go to the store or you could... Um, um, you know, email me. Okay. And I guess you could give that information. Yeah, can you tell us what where your store is located? Sure. The store is 219 Glenridge Avenue in Montclair, New Jersey. Okay. Um, and I have it there. And like I said, you could get it from me directly. But the good news is um, November of this year, it will be um, available as an ebook. Oh, great. Yeah. That sounds great. Yes. Okay. That's wonderful. So they can always, yeah. they can get the book. It'll right. be available. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about your store. Yeah. So when did you open up the store? The store opened April 5th. Of this you know, year? This year. Okay. Brand new. And basically it's Boarding and Vintage The Collective. And the reason why I went about doing it this way, um, because I just know as a designer coming up and how hard it was, you know, trying to get out there, trying to get mm. the promotion, trying to get people to, you know, um, you know, notice me as a brand. So by opening the store and inviting other indie designers, you know, they have that chance to be involved on, um, you know, in a store and have a, a address where people come see their stuff. You know, these are some of the designers in there haven't, you know, they're like four months old into this. Wow. So, you know, they have this location and they make great stuff. And, and the key thing about the store is that everybody involved um, is either sustainable, handmade, or one of a kind. Okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I know a little bit later in the second segment, you're actually going to take us through some items and show us how we can mm -hmm. actually do this ourselves. Right. Um, so you said it's a collective, um, and I assume that there are, are there a lot of designers in there, or a handful, or how? Um, it's a handful. You know, we have some clothing designers. We have Lois Eastland, who is based out of New York. We have Clash and Lime that are that's local. Um, we have Sarah Bunn who makes really great confetti like wrap pants, wow. you know, and these are people making it like in their house, you know, this is just straight indie designers, independent designers, immersion designers, um, you know, that, you know, just really want to get out there and they have great product. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very awesome. So we have about a minute left. Um, we're going to go to a break and then mm -hmm. we're going to come back and we are going to, uh, you're going to show us how to actually do this. So, um, one other thing I wanted to ask you before we did go to the break, um, when you decided that you would have a collective, was it based on the fact that you had started with one in Soho, or was it just was it something you've always wanted to do? Well, that's actually weird that you said that because you know, being in that collective is how I got you know noticed for the book. Oh, okay. um, so you know, I really you know just you saying that just made me think of that, but. You know, that's not the reason, but I still wanted to give that opportunity to, you know, other um, independent designers. Because, like I said, I've been doing it for, uh, you know, a while now, and I just knew it's, it's just hard <laughs> when yeah. you're independent and, you know, you're an artist and you're trying to get out there. So, you know, why not let's all share in the experience? That's really great that you've done that. Oh, so. thank you. So we're going to be right back. This is Dustin's Kaleidoscope, and we'll see you next time. Local government, local educational institutions, and local community members all use cable access TV to communicate their message. They depend upon it as an affordable means of outreach. Public educational and government access television empowers local government agencies, individuals, and groups to use the media to speak directly to their constituents in a more direct and cost-effective way. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. Welcome back to Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and I am here today with Bridget Artis. This is the second half of the show, and Bridget, you're actually going to show us a little bit 
about you're gonna show us how to do this yeah I'm gonna show you so okay pay attention I will I'm I will make sure you do a little bit of the sewing awesome so I'm taking two old t-shirts uh, we're going to pretend that they're perhaps stained or they've been shrunk or there's something wrong with them so what you do is you actually cut both of them up the back okay straight in the middle of the back and this is something that I do at um, pretty much all my uh, workshops, just because this is something that is so easy to do. Okay. So at least um, if you leave the workshop, you leave with one completed item. Okay. And where I, where would one find out about your workshop? Um, the workshop you could find um, by going to Born Again Vintage, the collective, the page on Facebook. Okay. Um, you could also go to the website, my website, which is b-artiste.com. Okay. Um, and I'll also list the workshops on there. Perfect. So now after you cut the back open on both shirts. Okay. You're going to... You know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have... I'm, can, sure. can you lift that up just to show everyone what it looks like? Because you... Straight back at the middle. Straight down the middle. Okay. Okay. Can Perfect. get easier than that. Yes. Okay, so once you do that, now you're going to um, cut from the very tip of the back of the shirt, and you're just going to cut diagonally. Okay. Um, like like it's a, a a triangle, and you're just going to keep going. So you're actually going toward the front. Going now. towards the front, and just keep turning it as you go, just so. Okay. You, and you're just going to cut diagonal, and then you're just going to go all the way up until you get to the shoulder. Okay. And you can cut the um, neck off because, you know, when you reinvent things, you want them to look cooler and uh, a collar is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the one half of a t-shirt. Okay. Okay, with this long strip. And you got to do the other side. But the thing is, now you have this left side okay you got to make sure you do the right side so we started okay. on the left so this time we're going to start on uh, the right okay and we're going to do the same exact thing and, and you just go all the just way go all the way up this is a great way to use recycled I mean to use old t-shirts especially if they're stained and you can't donate them or anything you can do this and I always find that a lot of people have t-shirts Yes. And they always, you know, they don't know what to do with them. And so this is just a quick, and the thing is, uh, once, because you're going to be our model. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> and so we will show you all the different ways you can wear it. It's just like so many different ways out of this one shirt. Wow. So you have the two halves now. Okay. So let's just lift it up so you Great. see. Great. And they both, halves. it looks like they both have tails. They both have tails. Yep. So what you're going to do is now, if you're savvy with the sewing machine, then this is like easy. Okay. Because literally you're just putting these two together oh. and you're sewing them up the back. And these are the two sides that are, do not have the tails. These are just the right. straight the center of the back. Okay. Right. So, you know, but we don't have a sewing machine here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have a needle ready and basically, um, I mean, and you could sew it too. It's just, um, it's just you do it in an, a straight stitch is okay. what it would be called if you did it. Of course, it's better to sew it. Um, so you would do a straight stitch down the back. Uh-huh. I'll try to do it as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is interesting. Yeah. Because not only are you, you know, helping the environment by not putting more t-shirts in the landfill, but you're also making a cool item. And have you ever had occasion to also reinvent an item that you have already reinvented like twice like have oh, you yeah, taken yeah. really okay yeah. something that doesn't sell that I absolutely love and you know I'm just furious that no one loved it as much <laughs> as I did I you know tear it apart and I put it back together as something else because I was like maybe you know they'll like it as a skirt as opposed to oh, a jacket okay. you know and I'll make it something completely different okay so. And so does it matter what type of thread, if you're, if you're sewing it by hand, does it matter what type of thread okay. you use or? Well, that's something I probably should have said. Now, I'm using a yarn needle. Okay. Um, with embroidery thread. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, you know, it's a thicker hole. 
the a little needle with regular thread would take forever in a day. Oh. Um, because you would have to um, do, you couldn't do a straight stitch. Okay, and I'm noticing that these are pretty large stitches, right. maybe three quarters of an inch or so, and there's right. about a half an inch in between. And, so. you, like, and you, you need to be consistent. Um, okay. You know, I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of... But this seems like something, <laughs> it's it's simple enough that even like teenagers or even preteens could do it as a project, you know, if they don't have a sewing machine right. because the, it's pr you know, it's pretty big. It's not like you have to get into a lot of detail. No, it's a, like I said, it's a basic stitch and, um, and it's easy. It's, it's basically in and out and you just try to stay consistent as far as the size stitches that you're... Um, doing and the, the type of stitches that you're doing and you don't do you have to take into account the color of the embroidery thread um, or well you know yeah you should you should try to match at least one of the t-shirts okay um because chances are you will see it um the thing is with embroidery thread it it looks creative oh, so okay. when, when the back shows if it happens to show it'll look like it meant you know, it was meant to show. Oh, okay. So because it matches with right. one of the t-shirts or both, depending on. Now, I noticed that you picked t-shirts that are two different colors. Is that, was that on purpose or was, you know, does it matter? Um, well, I'm, you know, it's just really hard for me to do something simple. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I could have picked two of the same color, but. That's too easy. Yeah, it's way too easy <laughs> and boring. So. You know, I like to, because usually I like to do a t-shirt that has a lot going on graphic-wise. Oh, okay. And then one that's kind of plain. So okay. So you have, you know, both. Okay. And I like that. It, it, this went so quickly. I mean, yeah. that just, boom, just yeah, done. So I'm done. Wow. I'm just going to knot it. Okay. And you just knot it like you would regular thread. There's okay. nothing special nothing about special. embroidery thread. And tie it just so it doesn't come out. And, and now you're going to put it on. All right. <laughs> Gladly. And. Oh, that's cool. So can you hold it up just so we can sure. see what it looks like after it's been sewn? And it still has the two tails right here. Still has the And the nice, tails. nice seam in the middle here. Okay. And that's how it looks in the back. Awesome. Okay. And so you're going to put it on, and I'm going to show you the different ways you can wear it. All right. So. As a, you know, as a top, you could just wear oh, it hanging. Cute. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I like that. You wear it hanging. If you don't want it hanging, you can tie it, and it becomes a wrap tee. Oh, uh, it goes around. Wow. Ways. And it's also, um, you know, it helps you squeeze if you want to. <laughs> yes, it, it does. gives you that little extra, um, so, you know, you would wear like it as that. a wrap tee. And oh, then that's cute. And then the last, you could wear it off your shoulders. Oh, that's very cute. This took like all of five minutes all to make. All of five minutes. Very, so literally, very cute. You have all these different that. options. Is, it looks in the back. You have it tied and you just did a regular mm -hmm. knot. Regular knot. Awesome. And so, you know, like going to the beach, wearing your bathing suit, you uh -huh. could just wear it hanging, you know. That's very nice. And that was, like I said, all of five minutes. Exactly. With two t-shirts. <laughs> So that's awesome. That's one. Now here's um, something. Okay. That if you don't, um, now this requires no sewing. And oh, it, and okay. It's, uh, this is like if you have a dress and it has an elastic waist, and let's say the straps broke off, the top doesn't fit anymore, there's a stain on the top, there's something wrong with the top. Right. What you do is, which is, and I just want to show people what it looked sure. like before. So it's just a regular little sundress. It's yeah. very cute, actually. Very I cute. love this color. Yeah. Very nice. And it just has a little zipper in the back. Mm -hmm. And, okay. So what we're going to do is, luckily, this has elastic waist. And um, it's finished. So literally, all you have to do is make a small cut right above the, the waist. And you're not, are you cutting all the way through? I'm cutting all the way oh, through. Oh, okay. And... And I'm literally just cutting the top off. And so, the, is there elastic on the bottom half? There's elastic ah, on the okay. bottom half. It will only work if it has elastic on the bottom half. Unless you know how to sew, then you could insert your own zip, okay. um, zipper. Okay. But like I said, luckily this has <laughs> elastic in it. <laughs> elastic so. in it. So you know, I mean, and this requires no sewing. 
because I mean there are people that the top is ruined and they throw the whole a uh, whole the dress whole away. Out. How did you, how do you think about, I mean, how do you come to think about this, Bridget? Well, I mean, I mean like, now it's like second nature. I can't even, just like immediately looking at your dress, I was already figuring out what I would do to it. <laughs> so like, I don't look at things normally anymore. It's just like how I could cut it and what I could turn it into. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, someone gave me this dress. You know, I get a lot of donations. Um, people that don't want to see their stuff end up at, you know, the Salvation Army, which Salvation Army's fine. But, you know, they just would rather see it have a new life or, you know, get some more use out of it. So they'll give it to me. Okay. So this is something um, that one of my customers gave to me. Oh, wonderful. And you know, one thing that we did not talk about, maybe you could tell, because I, I think we only have a few moments mm -hmm. left. What is the difference between thrift and vintage? Because you work with vintage. Right. Okay. Um, thrift is, thrift has vintage. Oh, okay. Thrift stores have vintage. It's just harder to find. Okay. Um, vintage stores, um, their entire store is based on vintage, and they know the history on everything uh. they have. They know what era it is. They know, you know, everything about the stuff that they're selling. Thrift, okay. you just happen upon vintage. Oh, I see. You know, it's a search for vintage. Okay. Um, so, so we have about a minute left, so I want to make sure that everybody sees this. And this is a skirt now? And this is a skirt now. And it's elastic, wow. so you don't need a zipper or something to get in. So you could literally... Um, I'm going to see if I can slip this on. Yeah. I'm just curious. Let's I'm just going to slip this on because this is such a pretty skirt. I, I was going to see if you I don't usually look. get dressed on television. But you know, <laughs> okay. I'll make an exception. Wow. Look at I that. I wish you could see the bottom of this. I can't jump on... The, I mean, I could jump on the table. But <laughs> anyway, we have about a minute here. I'm here in this wonderful... I'm going to lift this up so you can sort of see it. But we have a minute here. So, Bridget, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Um, where can people find your store again? Um, it's 219 Glimmeridge Avenue in Montclair, New Jersey. Okay. And um, your website? The website is b-artiste.com. Okay. And the Facebook page is Born Again Vintage, The Collective. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank this you. is wonderful. Thank you so much. And um, we're so happy to be – I'm so happy <laughs> that you're here because this is great for – especially during – you know, these times when people want to reuse and recycle their clothes. So thank you again. That is it for this edition of Dustin's Kaleidoscope. I'm Dustin, and I will see you next time. Bye.